Hey everybody, Rodamon here, thanks for tuning in to Starbound, a vanilla Let's Play tutorial series. So last episode I mentioned that I thought it would be a good idea for me to go back to a much easier world and perhaps find some Durasteel. But before I do that, I wanted to upgrade my uh, EPP when I need one battery. I need it, I want to upgrade my EPP so that it's the last upgrade that I'll need this entire game. Oh, that's not a battery. This is a battery. There we are. So I'm going to go ahead and do that because I did just get a whole bunch of augments. Um, so here is the cooling EPP, which is the final upgrade of your breathing apparatus. And uh, that is going to allow me to breathe on any world that I choose to go. Here it is. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to augment this for health. I'm trying not to die. I'm trying to do a never death run. And although the more damage sounds pretty tasty, I'm not going to lie. Uh, I'm going to go for more health so that uh, I might still be able to stay upright. All right. Now, with my newfound gear, let me put away some of it. Uh, I'm going to put away the sword, the and the ug other augments I got, and then go to town and, oh, remote grenade launcher, I'm going to put that away. Um, I'm going to sell this staff. Okay, so I think everything in my current inventory here I am using. Good. Let's go to town. And in town, I am going to also buy a new tech. Uh, because I have eight tech cards. Might as well. Maybe I can even get a new blessing... So, the tech I'm going to buy is, let's see, I will buy the Spike Sphere. So, the Spike Sphere turns you into a spiky ball that allows you to climb up and down walls like this, as you can see. I'm still going to keep the Aqua Sphere. I just wanted to demo the Spike Sphere for you all. So, back to Aqua. While I'm here, I'm going to do some side quests. It was requested, and also, at the beginning of this series... You all voted on what you'd like the focus to be, and side questing was a pretty high priority. So without a further ado, I will go do that. This one should be pretty easy now that I am a much higher level. Uh, I didn't do this early on because right when you have the option to do this quest does not mean you're strong enough. This quest is a challenging one when you do not have good gear. But now, I can slice through this like pie. Alright, so let's get the staff up. And drop ourselves a little energy. Make sure my health stays up. And bye bye, Dreadwing. Now, the rewards for a Dreadwing are not that great, which is why I didn't bother with Dreadwing until I was way overpowered for it, because it wasn't going to offer us anything amazing for our effort. Dreadwing is a tough fight until you have at least Durasteel leveled stuff. Of course, you could always try it earlier. Um, the penalty for death is pretty slight, so. It's not that big of a deal. But here is the codex for Dreadwing, the penguin. And let's go to the barkeep and he'll reward us with very little. If I'm being honest, very, very little. Here we are, a reward bag. And it has a tech card in it. Yay, a tech card. All right, I could also try to talk to Volo. Um, it might still be kind of challenging to do, but I'll give it a shot. 
which is the arena fights. All right, so there's a new blessing. It's thorns. I'm going to cook some food at Volo's cooking station. And Volo, let's go. So here's the arena fight. Uh, this one's not so bad. They're hitting me pretty hard, but... Ow. Get over here. Alright, there it is. More side quests done. Can I get a bigger trophy? All right, here's the final one. I'll try it. Oh boy. I'll have to be a little bit more careful. I was not careful last round in any way, shape or form. Always more, right? Okay, well, that was the fight. Wasn't as bad as I was anticipating. And we go back to Volo and wrap that up. So, even though I now have the cooling EBB, uh, what I am planning on doing is. So see, Volo no longer has anything for us. In fact, none of these guys should. Cool. Perfect. Now, instead of going to a harder world or completing the boss fighter or whatever, uh, what I want to do is A, put my new weapons away. Put my codex away. And then go back instead to a very, very easy world. I know that sounds so strange, right? But that's so that I can get the Dura Steel I need to make a whole lot of stuff that I do not have. Uh, so for that, I'm going to need some fuel. Let's get out to a moon that we can mine fuel at. Now that we have uh, the grappling hook, it's going to be a lot easier to mine out these fuel moons uh, a lot more efficiently. Which will be very, very good. Uh, but before I do that, I also want to free up some space so that I can actually store the fuel. So let's get rid of some of the unnecessary uh, blocks that I don't need to clog up my inventory with. Oh, is this just timber? No, this is ornate wood. Wooden. All right, we're just literally tossing this out, deleting it, so that I have space. All right, next up, let's go beam down and do a little bit of mining.
I'm gonna see if there's a natural cavern for us to enter from. I also could make my own, but I found that the natural caverns can sometimes be voluminous and an easy point of ingress, but uh, hey, I'm not really finding any. Uh, so I guess I could start mining one. Yeah, I'll start mining one here. Oh, great. Nothing like starting a fight against a ghost by being set on fire. I'm illuminating my way so that I can find my way back out more easily. Uh, these types of moons are not that dangerous if you... Make sure to remember your way out. Oh, here's a lot of liquid fuel. Oh boy. Hello, ghost. So, him getting close to me does damage over time. So I'm not going to want to hug the ghost. I find that the even though the liquid fuel is not as efficient as the crystals for as a fuel source, um, the speed at which they you acquire it makes it, you know, a really good way to refuel your ship. All right, so at this point, I've completely and utterly lost my way back out, but I know up is always a way to do it. Plus, I have a uh, teleporter if worse comes to worse. All right, let's start working our way out. I definitely have enough fuel for a few hops. After I loot this giant puddle. Poor ghost, stealing all, his, all of his beautiful fuel. And the more you mine, the more pissed he gets. Or it gets. So, in other words, don't be too greedy, like me. Alright, I'm close enough to the surface, I should be able to beam up, and then I'm out. Some people are real, I, I, I've seen people say that the, it stresses them out to be fighting Mr. Ghosty Man because you can't actually fight him you, he just tries to kill you um, but I, I don't find it to be too too hard so I'm going to head over to this uh, I want to go to an easier world a radioactive one but I've already been eh, I'll go here Okay, there we are. And let's pick the world itself. Actually head to this little nowhere. Oh, nope, this is not dangerous enough to have Durasteel. So I'm doing this for the Durasteel. And for me to get Durasteel, I need to go to a planet that has it. it. Needs to be danger enough for it. it. Needs to be an irradiated planet, in other words. Hello. Let's eat the cooked fish, please. Alright, so this planet has Dura Steel. Perfect. The Dura Steel that I get here will be able to allow me to do a, a fair bit of crafting. Crafting up a lot of the stations that I don't have access to. Hello, guy. Alright, I'm not going to find much traversing the surface of this planet 
Or at least I'm not going to find Durasteel, which is chiefly what I am after. So, down I go. I'm going to break the rules and go straight down. Ouch. And I should be able to... Oh, there's uh, facilities here. I should be able to quickly find the dirt still I need down at this level. Now, the reason why I'm on an easier planet is because on the frozen planets... Uh, we're going to find the newer high-tier ores in far greater abundance than we're going to find Durasteel. Um, so going to this planet will have a much higher percentage of Durasteel. And that way I can actually find it without trying too, too hard. It would be possible to find a lot of Durasteel on a frozen planet. It would just take a lot longer. Titanium. There's some Durasteel here, though. Let me to get that Durasteel. Also, coal is not terrible to, for me to collect. It is required for, like, circuit boards and other circuitry. Companions here were taking a while, so help them out. Okay, I've obviously been here, hence the torches, but I haven't been this way. Javelins were up there. You keep it. Very dangerous to just blindly leap into caverns like that, but with multi jump, at least I have a few. Uh, I have a bit of a safety, right? I have a bit of a safety net. Hello, challenge portal. Uh, I'm not going to bother with the challenge portals because because I'm on a simpler world. The rewards for the challenge portal are just not going to stack up against what I could get at more difficult worlds. I.e., they're not worth my time. Boxes here, you know, the challenge portals likely just have some garbage wep weapon for me at the end of it. Oh, come on, Durasteel. What is going on? Oh, finding eight dirt still in these boxes. That's nice. Huh? So the powers of a high powered manipulator. How much do I have so far? I have got 38. That's not going to be enough. There's a lot of, um, oh, this is a different biome. There's a lot of uh, projects for me to do to make with their steel. Uh, you know, pet stations and all the pixel stuff. And I want to build that for you because, of course, this is supposed to be a tutorial of sorts. And if I don't have the Duro Steel to build it, I don't get to show it to you.
I would say a healthy amount of Dura Steel that I'm looking for is probably in the triple digits. Each of the new benches require roughly 20 or so. And there was a bunch of them. So with that in mind, I'm going to need a whole bunch. Barely paying attention to the enemies here, but that's also one of the uh, benefits, right, of going to an uh, easier world. Okay, I've already been here, so let me go down. Uh, is that most of these enemies are just not going to do the kind of damage to me that is going to worry me. Uh, they would need to be hitting me for a long time. And as a result, I can focus more on the resource acquisition. Oh, we're starting to get into the tar, huh? I can focus more on resource acquisition than I... I have to spend making sure I don't get killed. Whereas if I was trying to do this on a hot world, uh, the enemies would be hitting me like a ton of bricks and, you know, I'd have to focus on that a lot more keenly. How much do I have now? 90? Yeah, we're getting close to that uh, desired triple-digit threshold. This is an old tar pit. Full of bones. Long dead critters. I'm also picking up a little bit of titanium here or there. I'm not really going out of my way for it. Oh, and then there's oil. I don't know if I have a lot of oil collected. I probably don't, in fact. Um, because... Yeah, so I can get some of the oil. Let me illuminate. There we are. Oh, perfect. All right, I, pr I almost certainly have enough now so I can work my way out. Oil, of course, slows you down, so it's hard to move around after you've been covered, like I keep getting. Alright, instead of putting down a teleporter, I know I have one, but instead of putting that down, I'm going to dig my way out. And just collect every Dura Steel between me and the, the exit. I check these. No, I didn't. Because I can just more or less follow my uh, path of torches out, roughly, vaguely. I might be high enough to teleport out. Yep, there it is, beam on out. All right, so let's get the pet station and all the other constructibles that I have yet to build. Okay, I'm telling them to please stop following me so I can, don't lose my mind. All right, so we have 66 dirt still. Might get me most of the way there. I still might need to find more. So I'll stay here in orbit around the uh, radioactive star in case. It may sound like a lot, but it goes pretty fast. So taking a look, I'm not going to worry about the add-ons uh, 
fossil station I have forging a pet station. I do not have a pet station, so I need one battery and a few more wires. So the pet station allows you to produce capture pods, healing stations, and other pet related items. Uh, here it goes. So here's the pet healing station that I could make. Um, and a pet tether. Uh, pet tethers will, well, I, I guess you can read it, allows you to tether a pet to a specific area so that it doesn't um, leave that area if you want to leave pets, you know, in a, in a, in a area. Uh, battery, silicon boards, copper wire, okay. Here's the pet healing station. I'm just gonna grab that trophy and put it away. So the pet healing station is going to allow me to put in captured pets and heal them if they need healing. Uh, what else? Could make the tether, but let me look at other stuff. So pixel compressor I can craft up. This compresses your pixels for storage so that you don't lose them when you die. And then I need a battery and three boards for that. Alright, and then this is the pixel printer. Let me go to the new section. Put these down. So the compressor is, think of it as a, come on pet, get out of the way. Think of it as a bank. I can bank uh, like 10,000 of my pixels into a block and then put this block away into storage so that if I do die, I don't lose the pixels that I've banked. And then the pixel printer allows me to print out things that I've scanned. Everything that I've scanned. So it's a pr pixel printer uh, is very, very nice when it comes to uh, building your, uh, you know, your colony, because it'll allow you to mass replicate uh, items that you might want to design your colony with. Craft the printer. Uh, rail crafting station is battery, two boards, and a bunch of wires. Got it. And then the wiring station is, I believe, the last one I need to make which requires sticks of RAM, which I don't believe I have. I would need to do some space missions because I have only one stick. Okay, so I won't worry about that right now. All right, here's the rail crafting station. And as you can imagine, um, think I don't have a lot of Durasteel left. I actually have four Durasteel left. So this is proof that yes, I did need a lot of Durasteel. Uh, in no ways that surprised me. Here is the uh, the rail setup for trams and stuff. Um, I'll probably not do too much rail building because it's just not wasn't part of the goals of the series or anything like that. But wanted to prove that it exists. Uh, let's get the one phase matter and build a tether. And then I can demo the tether. So as you can see, here is a tether, which keeps a pet in a specific area. So if I s insert the phoenix, the phoenix is now bound to this spot and won't leave. It's a way for you to have like a ranch or something like that. Uh, okay. 
let's do parts and labor. I haven't really done that. Salvage interface chips. Let me grab the ones I have. And salvage power couplings. So here is the power couplings. And I'm going to put away some of the resources I don't need to keep on me. All right, and then the interface chips are here. So the way to do these, given my current strength, I'm actually gonna to need to jump yet again. I'm gonna to jump to a gentle star, like this one. Nope, maybe not that one. Here's an unexplored one. Let's get over there and go acquire some parts that I'm going to need. Alright, so let's head out to this hostile ship here. There's a few hostile ships, and then there's also these interference spots. And I'll do both. I'll demo them both. All right, so here's what a hostile ship looks like. You deploy your mech because you'll be in space. Now to get the salvage interface chips and advanced power couplings, uh, you get that by basically mech fighting. And I'm at a gentle star because my mech here, I've not upgraded much, so it's not strong. Now you can almost fully ignore the fights that you do as mechs. Um, you don't really need to upgrade your mech in the base game. There's very, very few scenarios where it will come in handy. Uh, however, most of the Peacekeeper missions will rely upon uh, a bit of mecking. So if you intend to do some Peacekeeping, uh, mechs are going to be nice. And I have a quest. This is the quest to do the initial upgrade for the mechs. This is uh, was offered at the Ark. Essentially, the way this works is some of the stuff you kill is going to drop the parts you need. Like these robots, there is a salvage ship right there that they just dropped. My blue bar is sort of my en combined energy and health. And here's power couplings. And as you can see, my I'm now 3 out of 5 and 3 out of 10. I started 1 out of 5 and 2 out of 10. So killing the sort of guards of the pirate ship uh, are going to net you some of the resources you need. And then here's the pirate ship itself. I board it. I can either, I can pop out of my mech whenever I want, but figure why not kill the initial on foot. And then when you loot the bases here, you're going to find parts that you need. So I just found another uh, power coupling. And this is more or less how you go about it. Let me scan everything because I might want. Well, I'm supposed to be Western, so I guess I'm never going to build a facility quite like this. Uh, there was also some fuel. So that was some liquid fuel. More chips and couplings. Ores. And this is just one style of sort of, um, for lack of a better term, like like raids that you can you can make. You were bored, huh? Well, now you're dead. All right, 
scanning everything for my pixel computer for later. And teleporter core, a simple mech blueprint, which I will learn. It's the Astro Mech Boosters. And that is the last of that. And you don't even have to go anywhere. You can just teleport out right here. So those are the sort of um, ship fights. Let me do one more ship fight, because one more ship fight, and I should be able to complete this quest, I'd imagine. Uh, so there's a ship over here that I can intercept. I'm just going to leave my fuel in the hatch. Might as well. Alright, let's back down. If I wanted to min-max uh, the amount of parts that I get, I would clear everything in space. Um, however, I feel like it's kind of a bit of a waste of time. Given how slow my mech is, it's best to just go straight for the pirate base. Because the pirate base is going to have some guaranteed chips and stuff. There's a very wide variety of um, ship, uh, the mech weapons that you can have. You can have, like, drill arms and sniper turrets and all sorts of stuff. Uh, the mech, the way it looks, as you can see, this is a Nova Kids st styled mech. It's your mech initially starts off, uh, you know, base race based, but then once you get upgraded parts and stuff, you can have your mech look just about however you want. All right, so there's power power coupling. Okay, another blueprint. This is for Beat Mech Body. I'll take the salvage armor plate. You want to have a shootout, huh? I win. It's not a. It's not a very good source of fuel, mind you. I mean, you might you might find more fuel than what I'm currently finding. So now I just got all my salvage interface chips. I'm done with that. I'm just looking for the couplings now. Here's one. Or power. Yeah, the couplings. Oh, here's another mech part. Uh, Tommy gun mech arm. And that is another wrap. All right, I have nine out of 10 power couplings. Um, I think what I'll do is go back to my mech and see if I can't scratch up one more power coupling just from killing things that are uh, orbiting. My mech got pretty damaged because of the way I fought those turrets. Ouch, and then rammed into the engines. If you look around you, you'll see red no, there's not. All right, I'll just get out of here. Normally, you'd see, like, red indicators in the direction of enemies, but I might have cleared it all, and I don't want to go on a fool's errand if I have cleared it all. So next up, I'm going to go to these um, celestial interference areas. And I want to print up... Alright, I need more Durastil to print up a Relocator, but a Relocator would be really, really nice. A Relocator lets you sort of reposition creatures and the like. Um, Alright, so let's beam the mech down. 
And this is the interference things. It's check the green arrow, but it's uh, it's pretty similar to the pirate ships. But you're just going to a station instead. Okay, chips, but not uh, couplings. The um, sort of sentient asteroids here are really good to refill your energy if you're damaged. So they tend to have energy and not components. Okay, there's a few more enemies down this way. Good, ones that might actually have the parts I need. Nope. Nope. More interface chips. But I'm sure, I'm sure where I'm headed, I'll, I'll find some. I'm not that worried. There we go. I got it. But I'm going to clear this out anyway. As it will give me parts that could be useful later. atrocious aim. Alright, I think I've looted all that I need to. That we go. And now let's go down to the tell shop and return these salvaged components to the mech mechanic. The mech mech. Okay. He is going to invent a missile rack arm. He's giving me the blueprints. And there it is. Oh, I just unlocked the mech body. And then the next is heading to a weapon test site, uh, if I want to agree to it. And here is the mech that I have. I can change the body outs um, and craft them and all that. So if I wanted to, here are the bodies that I have. Here is the beat mech body that I have blueprint for, which is a little bit more energy and defense than the current Marshall one I have. And then the USM USCM mech body is more defense uh, basic mech boosters so you know I could build better boosters I would need more salvage thruster nodules for that I could build um, the Tommy gun mech arm the if I had more Dora steel the missile rack which is better than the basic weapons that I have and let's say I did want to build this thing I would just craft it here at the mech part crafting. There's the mech arm. I'd go over to the mech that I have and I could replace the arm, the default arm, the flat cannon, with the Tommy gun. And that's more or less how you design your mechs. Uh, I'm a blue Nova kid, so let's have a blue mech body with, uh, I have a red bandana with red lining. There it is. Now it's ready to deploy. Let's go to the testing site take him up on his mission. I'm probably not strong enough to be... Oh, well, this is uh, not what I thought it was. Right, right. Let's go get...
So here he is testing his mech designs. Ouch. Let's go with the dual wield uh, ones. And I prevailed over his mech. Gives me a large wooden crate with literally nothing in it, you know, because that's cool. And I can go back to the tell shop. So this is him just testing out his own mech designs where I play punching bag. Good stuff, right? Good stuff. All right, let's return to him. Hey, look at you. So they, this uh, vendor has unique weapons. Uh, Biggie's reputable weaponry. Um, as you can see here, for me to get the Luna Ring, I need a Boomerang, Upgrade Module, Fade, Phase Matter, and then the Molten Boomerang. Uh, both are now available. But let's go tell him that uh, I kicked his mech's butt. And he gave me a Matter Manipulator Module and the Shock Hopper Mech MK1 offer which is cool all right i've shown a bit of that uh what's next i what did i want to do well i guess i'll have to figure that out next episode regardless of what it was so that's all the time i have uh, next episode, I'll probably end up going to the artifact, the Apex artifact, and then heading to the hardest worlds, the Tearsick worlds, the scorched, fiery, molten, volcanic worlds, in order to uh, continue. And then I also want to find one of those worlds to colonize. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about the colonization mechanics. If you have any feedback for me, let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you... Uh, appreciate all of the completionism that I've been attempting to do. If you have any feedback, tips, anything like that, let me know. I'll catch you all later. Adios.